Hey guys, welcome to my video on acid base disorders. In this series, I will be including compensated and, and mixed disorders in my discussion. I'm going to start out by reminding you to please subscribe and turn the notifications on. So whenever you are in a situation where you have to analyze data that includes the pH, bicarbonate, and partial pressure of carbon dioxide, you're going to first look at the pH and assess whether it's acidic or basic. And there are two more pieces of information that are important. One is that bicarbonate contributes a basic quality to a solution. So um, the higher the bicarbonate, the more basic something is, and the lower the bicarbonate, the less basic or more acidic the substance is. And for the purpose of teaching in this video, I'm going to consider bicarbonate having a normal value of 24. Now, usually in a vignette, uh, when you're given raw values, there's a range that is pretty close to 24, so like 22 to 28, something like that. But for the purpose of teaching, I'm going to use just one value. Carbon dioxide lends an acidic quality to any solution. So the higher the pressure of carbon dioxide, the more acidic something is going to be. Uh, we're going to consider the normal pressure of carbon dioxide to be 40 millimeters of mercury for the purpose of this video. So, as I mentioned before, you look at the pH as this diagram shows and you assess, is it acidic, being like less than 7.4, or basic, or more than 7.4. Then, if you assess that the pH is acidic, you look at the bicarb and pressure of carbon dioxide and find the value that matches the pH. So what that means is you're looking for a low bicarbonate or a high pressure of carbon dioxide. And low and high are relative to the normal values that I just told you about. So in I have written a little more about metabolic acidosis because in this video later on I will be concentrating only on metabolic acidosis. So that's why that's there. So as I discussed in the first slide, when you're looking for the conspicuous disorder, and again that's the one that is diagnosed when its representative value agrees with the pH. So our initial inspection is just looking for a conspicuous disorder where the representative value agrees with the pH. So let me give you some examples. So the first one is a pH of 7.1, a bicarb of 32, and a partial pressure of, uh, or a pressure of carbon dioxide of 46. Now the pressure of carbon dioxide actually agrees with the pH, so it's a respiratory acidosis. The second one, the pH is 7.6 and the bicarb value agrees with it, so it's a metabolic alkalosis. In my third example, pH is 7.2 and it agrees with the bicarb, so it's an, a metabolic acidosis. And lastly, the pH of 7.6 agrees with the pressure of carbon dioxide, so it's a respiratory alkalosis. So in this video, I'm concentrating on metabolic acidosis. So when metabolic acidosis is the conspicuous disorder that you, that you diagnose just by looking initially at the pH and the bicarb and carbon dioxide, we would like to think that the carbon dioxide, whatever the pressure is, is a compensation for the metabolic acidosis, but we don't really know. There's no way for us to really know. So for every type of metabolic acidosis, be it normal anion gap or high anion gap, you always want to check there is if there is an additional respiratory disorder or not, because we don't know. We just 
made a very superficial assessment that there's a metabolic acidosis, but we don't know if there's a respiratory disorder involved or not. So there's a way to figure out whether there's respiratory compensation or a respiratory acid-based disorder because you want to know is that figure, is that number for the pressure of carbon dioxide, can it be fully explained by compensation or is there another disorder going on? So the way I remember our, our deeper analysis when we're looking for whether there's respiratory co compensation or not is have you met my friend Sid? In the winter he's on his PC and is by carbs plus he ate. So this is my way of remembering the expression that's this. So the, the 1.5 kind of looks like an is I guess and the uh, HC O3 minus is bicarbonate, so bicarbs plus 8, so plus he ate. And what that is, or what that helps us do is, it helps us create a range. So once you get that number for the expected pressure of carbon dioxide for a compensation, you create a range of 2 above or two below. And that is what we call Winter's formula. You're creating a range of expected pressure of carbon dioxide for a true compensation. And so then what you do is you, you got your range, it's a nice narrow range, and you compare the patient's pressure of carbon dioxide that's given in the problem and see whether it falls into that range. If it does, you got it through compensation. And then the diagnosis is metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation. If the patient's given P, uh, PaCO2 is higher than the range that you calculated from winters, then the diagnosis is an additional respiratory acidosis. If it is lower than the range you calculated, then the diagnosis is additional respiratory alkalosis. So if you had in your original inspection and in your original from the first slide which you got a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, you just stop here. You just stop here. But if there is a high anion gap, and just remember, an anion gap is calculated by subtracting the bicarb plus the chloride from the sodium. If there's a high anion gap, meaning this whole expression that I've written here is greater than 12, you have to do one more step. And how I remember that is if SID is high, that means he flies over the delta. So what is what is delta? What, what does delta have to do with this? Well, what delta is, is the patient's anion gap minus 12. So what delta really is, it's a number that tells you how much greater than normal is the person's anion gap because they have a high anion gap but the delta tells you how much greater than normal is their anion gap. You take the delta and you add it to the bicarbonate value that is given for the patient to correct it. Okay so if the corrected bicarbonate value is 24 there is no other metabolic disorder. If the corrected bicarbonate is less than 24, you have a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis in addition to 
the high anion gap metabolic acidosis that you initially diagnose. And of course, if the corrected bicarb is more than 24, diagnosis is metabolic alkalosis. So what this delta calculation step and correcting the bicarbonate value does is it helps you analyze and do an, go deeper and figure out whether there is another metabolic disorder going on. And notice we use 24. Why do we use 24? Because 24 is the normal value of bicarbonate. Remember from the beginning I said we're going to use 24 for bicarbonate. So again, if you're in a situation where you have a range of normal for bicarb, you're going to replace this 24 with the range of normal. So a practice problem that I have is you have a patient with a pH 7.2, bicarb of 16, and PCO2 of 36. The sodium is 138 and the chloride is 98. So you're going to do your initial inspection and you're going to diagnose this. We'll look at the pH, it's acidic, the bicarb is low, and that matches the pH. So it's a metabolic acidosis. So the first thing you do now is to see whether the number for the pressure of carbon dioxide can be fully accounted for by respiratory compensation. So you're going to use Winter's formula and you're going to find your expected range. So we calculate it, we get 32 and we add to up and subtract two from it to get the range and we compare the patient's given pressure of carbon dioxide it's 36 it's outside of the range it's higher than the range so there is an additional respiratory acidosis present now uh, we want to figure out should we do something next? Well, yeah, we should because this is actually a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Now, if this wasn't a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, we wouldn't have to do anything else. But since it is, we have to find out the delta. So the delta is, remember, the patient's anion gap minus 12. So that comes out to be 12. So our delta value is 12 and we have to add it to the bicarbonate to correct it. The corrected bicarbonate is 12 plus 16 which is 28. So 28 exceeds 24 which we are taking as a normal for bicarbonate. Thus there is a metabolic alkalosis occurring at the same time. So our final diagnosis for this entire problem is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, and metabolic alkalosis. So that's the diagnosis for this problem. Um, and thank you for watching. You've reached the end of this video and uh, more videos coming soon.